Have you ever heard expressions like on the rocks, trouble in paradise, break up, let down, shot down? Or what about to ghost someone or to stand someone up? All of these are examples of relationship phrasal verbs, idioms, and slang that we use all the time in American English. Today I'm going to teach you over 30 more of these expressions. Welcome to English with Gabby. I'm Gabby, and my goal is to help you improve your English. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get all of my videos right when they come out. All right, let's get started. First, we're going to start with some phrasal verbs, and we're going to work in some slang and idioms in there as well. First, I'm going to teach you some vocabulary that we use to end a relationship. Two phrasal verbs that we use are break up and split up. These are both used at the end of a sentence, so they don't require you to have an object after them. So we don't say they broke up their relationship or they split up their relationship. Instead, we say, wow, I can't believe they split up. They were such a good match. Or I can't believe they broke up. They were so good together. A slang word that we use is splitsville. This is something you'll hear a lot on celebrity gossip news or in celebrity gossip magazines. They would say, for example, it's Splitsville for Dana and Josh after five years together. Next is the expression trouble in paradise. Trouble in paradise means that not everything is going well. A couple is experiencing some problems in their relationship. Don't believe everything they post on Instagram. There's really trouble in paradise. The next one is on the rocks. This means that a couple is going through a difficult time. We also say things are rocky, meaning things aren't going so well at the moment. I'm not surprised they split up. They've been on the rocks for the past few months. Next, we have a slang term, to ghost someone. To ghost someone is when you end the relationship, but you don't tell the other person. So all you do is stop communicating with them completely. You block them on social media. You don't respond to their calls or texts. You basically become a ghost. I can't believe she ghosted me. I thought things were going well. Next, we have to dump someone or to get dumped. This is a slang term that we use when someone ends the relationship but the other person wasn't expecting it. So one person thought that it was going well, the other person was not happy, so they ended the relationship. We can use this in active form and passive. Josh is in a really bad place. He got dumped again. This means that it happened to him. Actively, we would say, Josh dumped his girlfriend and she's devastated. This means that he is the one who did the action. When someone is trying to reconcile or fix their relationship, we can use these two phrasal verbs. Get back together. That means that someone's relationship was off and now it's back on. We can also say to make up or make up with. This is when you resolve any problems that you had. Did you hear that Zach and Kelly made up? and got back together last week. Then we have the phrasal verb to get over. This means to recover. You might notice that we've used this in the past to talk about sickness, like it took him two weeks to get over the flu, but in this context, we use it to emotionally recover. It took him a year to get over his ex. By the way, ex is referring to a past relationship. So we can say ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, ex-husband or wife, and here we also use a slang expression, ex flame. A flame is a past relationship. We also use the phrasal verb to fall out with someone or to have a falling out with someone. This means that your relationship ends on bad terms. They don't talk anymore. They had a falling out or they don't talk anymore, they fell out with each other. Now let's talk about flirting and rejection. In case you don't know what flirting means, this is when someone shows physical signs that they wanna be in a relationship with you. For example, touching your shoulder, flipping your hair, winking, anything like that, or even using words and complimenting someone. The first two phrasal verbs are hit on and come on to. This is when someone is flirting with you and trying to get you to start a relationship with them, even if it's just a physical short-term relationship. Did you see that guy? He was coming on to me the whole night. Next, we have the phrasal verb, pick up. 
To pick up is when you try to convince someone to go home with you. Every weekend, he goes bar hopping, trying to pick up some women, and he's always unsuccessful. This is also where the word pickup line comes from. If you've never heard of a pickup line, these are popular lines or sentences that men tell women in order to get them to go out with them. For example, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? That's an example of a pickup line. Do they usually work? No. Do American men still use them? Yes. Next we have to ask out. This is typically only used in a romantic way. She was so shocked when he asked her out because they had been friends for years. These next two phrasal verbs mean that you get rejected, turn down, and shoot down. He's been shot down by every single woman in his office. He gets turned down all the time by beautiful women, but he keeps trying. Next, we have to stand someone up. This is the ultimate form of rejection. This is when someone cancels a date with you, but they don't tell you. So you're left at the restaurant or at the location waiting for this person. To stand someone up is when you do it to someone else. To be stood up is when it happens to you. Can you believe poor Dana was stood up last night? Next, we have let down. This is to be rejected by someone. At least she was nice to him and let him down easy. Let down is typically softer and kinder than shot down or turned down. Turned down and shot down can be a little rude, especially shot down. Next, we have the word lead on. This is when you make someone believe that you're romantically interested in them when you're actually not. Then we have to be into someone. This is the slang way of how we say we're interested in someone. Wow, can't Amy see that he's just leading her on? He's not into her at all. Next, we have the verbs turn on and turn off. Typically, these have two ways of being used. To turn on is to get excited in a physical way or a sexual way. And turn off is to lose that physical attraction to someone. However, we commonly use these as nouns, a turn off and a turn on. A turn on is something that makes you interested in someone romantically. And a turn off is something that does the opposite. It makes you less interested in someone romantically. Intelligence is such a turn on for me while arrogance is a major turnoff. Now let's talk about physical activity and vocabulary that we use to spend time with others. First, we've got chill with and hang out with. Now these are typically not used in a romantic way. So if you say, I'm gonna chill with my best friend this weekend, or I hung out with my friends last night, this typically just means friendship nothing romantic but we have the phrasal verb go out with this can be used to go out on a date with someone or to talk about being in a dating relationship with someone for example they've been going out for the past few months or i went out with peter last weekend and we had a great time the next phrasal verbs are to fix up or to hook up this is when someone else organizes a date or relationship between two people. Did you know that I'm the one who fixed up or hooked up Bethany and Caleb? Yeah, I knew they would work together well, and they did. To get around. Saying that someone gets around means that they have relationships with lots of people, typically sleeping with or having sexual relationships with a lot of people. Mm, stay away from that guy, he really gets around. We can also call someone a player or a flirt meaning that they show romantic interest in many different people. He's a player, don't go out with him. Or he's such a flirt. He flirts with all the girls at school. Next we have to make out. This means to kiss passionately. Wow, they were making out nonstop at the party yesterday. Now this next word is very important that you know because I've had many students come up to me privately after class and ask me what this word means because men or women approached them and used this word. That word is hook up. Now earlier, I told you the word to hook up can mean to initiate a relationship between two people, but the more common use is some kind of physical or sexual relationship. So if someone asks you, hey, do you wanna hook up? They're asking you to be physical with them. This word has a wide range of meanings, typically depending on how old the person is who you're talking to. For example, for high school students, hooking up can mean just making out. But for most adults, 
hookup means a sexual relationship. I can't believe they hooked up. They seem like a strange match. Next we have fool around with. This is another word that it's important for you to know. To fool around with someone means to start a physical or sexual relationship, but no relationship attached. Typically, it's just physical, not emotional. It's kind of like the expression friends with benefits, where it's friends who have no emotional ties, only a physical relationship. He got fired because he was caught fooling around with a few of his employees. This next slang word, I get questions about all the time, and that is Netflix and chill. If someone asks you if you want to do Netflix and chill, that typically sounds like just watch a movie and hang out. But no, they're most likely asking for some kind of sexual relationship. So maybe starting with a movie and then leading somewhere else. So make sure you know this is not just watching a movie and sitting on the couch and relaxing. Next, we have the expression to hit it off with someone. This means that you have good chemistry or a good relationship with someone. For example, we really hit it off on our first date and look. Two years later, we're still together. Next, we have the idiom to be swept off your feet. This means to fall completely and suddenly in love with someone. It all happens very quickly. Have you talked to Maria lately? She's been completely swept off her feet by her new boyfriend. Next, we have an expression that I'm sure you have in your language. Love is blind. This means that you're so in love with someone that you can't see any of their weaknesses. Can you believe she's dating that guy? <sighs> love is blind. Then we have the expression, a love-hate relationship. This is when two people have a very crazy relationship where first they love, then they hate. First they love, then they hate. Very toxic and unhealthy to have a relationship like this. This slang word, to have a crush on someone, means that you are interested romantically in someone. It's the first step. So first you meet someone, then you have a crush on them, and then maybe that leads to a relationship. And lastly, we have playing the field. Playing the field is when someone is only interested in having a lot of short-term relationships. They don't want a long-term committed relationship. We often use this when someone was in a long-term relationship and then they get out of it and they don't want any commitments. They just want to have fun. Guys, I'm good. I'm having fun playing the field right now. Next, we have eye candy. Eye candy is when you're looking at someone really attractive. So you would say, ooh, major eye candy. Arm candy is when you're out on a date with someone who's very attractive. Typically, they're only your date for the night. They're not your girlfriend or boyfriend. They're just someone who makes you look good because of how attractive they are. And lastly, we have the word fling. This is a short relationship that only lasts for a specific time period. For example, a summer fling, only for the summer. Vacation fling, only when you're on vacation. Well guys, now you know relationship slang, idioms, and phrasal verbs that we use often in the USA. For more cool vocabulary like this, go check out my vocabulary playlist with tons more vocabulary that you can use every single day. Make sure to share this video with a friend so that they can improve their English too. Welp, until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye!